Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to start the topic, the causes of the Second World War. For this topic, we're going to focus on the history between the year 1919 to 1939. That is the year when the Second World War started, and also we call this period as the interwar period. So, firstly, we're going to、uh, continue talk about. The arrangement of the First World War. Last term, actually, we talk a little about it. We talk about the Paris Peace Conference, the Big Three, the Treaty of Versailles. But you have to know, Germany they were not the only country who fight in their camp during the First World War. He al she also has other allies, right? Those were Austria-Hungary, Ottoman Empire, and also Bulgaria. So actually, they are ring. A treaty of Versailles is not the only treaty they've signed after the First World War, and they sign different treaties with different countries depends on their involvement in the First World War, and all these treaties actually result in new national boundaries and new nations.、Uh, so I think it's important for us at this stage to check about the European map. So. I'm, we're going to make a comparison. First, this is Europe in 1914, and this one is Europe after the First World War. So you can find one big change is all the countries in blue color, right? They were all new nation states. For example, Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Yugoslavia. I have two questions here. First question is, why Austria count as an old nation state, while the on on the other hand, Hungary count as a new nation state? The second question is, why these nation states were able to gain independence? This is like the first time in history so many small and new nation states from like in the same time. So for the first question, the reason is before Austro-Hungarian Empire, what we have is Austrian Empire. So the Hung Hungarians and or Hungarians only part of the one of the ethnic groups in Austrian Empire. But because they、um, become more and more influential in the empire, this is the reason why they finally change its name as Austro-Hungarian Empire. And this is also the reason why. Austria can be counted as an old nation state, while Hungary counts as a new nation state. So, for the second question, why so many nation states can be formed at the same time, like in Eastern Europe, right? So, the reason for this is because actually go back to the Paris Peace Conference part about the Big Three. One of the Big Three give out this idea about the self determination, and actually that person is. Woodrow Wilson, who is the peace lover, remember? So he is the one who gave out the idea about the self determination, and he said this. This is actually regard we regard it as a starter of decolonization. <clears throat> What is decolonization? When we talk about the first world, what the causes of first world, what we talk about colonizationist policy, right? So that means different countries they fought they. Uh, formed colonies around the world, while Britain became the strongest country in the world because they have so many colonies around the world. So decolonization means we are now turning these colonies into independent countries, since they should have their self determination. So after this idea, based on this idea, this is the reason why so many new nation states were able to form because of the Woodrow Wilson. He's fourteen points. So after we、uh, answer these two questions, you can. I think it's also important for us to see the relationship, find the relevance between the new map and the old map to see how these countries were formed. So now we are filling the blanks together. After the First World War, four powerful empires in Europe fell. They included German Empire, Tsarist Russia, Austro-Hungarian Empire, and also Ottoman Empire. And what was formed the first communist country is obvious. 
is Tsarist Russia. Russia was formed the first communist country in the world in 1922, and the name is USSR or Soviet Union. So this is also the reason why, even though Russia they belong to the winning team, they should belong to the winning team, right? But still, they have to make some changes because in 1917 they were having October Revolution and they actually withdrew from the First World War earlier. This is the reason why, even though they should belong to the winning team, still they have to pay something, pay for the idea of Woodrow Wilson, right? So next, the former Empire of Austria-Hungary was dissolved and the new nations were created from its land. Let's, let's check it out. Actually, Austria-Hungarian Empire is like very large country, but now the remaining part is really small, right? So I think Yugoslavia, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and a part of Poland were created from Austria-Hungary Empire. Okay, next. Russian land yielded the new nations of Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and also Poland. But actually, among all these new nation states, you have to see one important, special case, not important, but special case, that is Poland. For all other nations, they are 100% new. Like the first time in history, their name were on them as the invent country were on the map, but actually for Poland, we used to have Poland as a country, but because of the decreasing influence and power of the country, this is the reason why. It had long been divided among those empires, those German Empire, Tsarist Russia, and also Austro-Hungarian Empire. And after First World War, thanks to Woodrow Wilson for his self-determination idea, finally Poland won independence and regained their territories. So, before I show you the exercise, I think it's important for me to mention one other thing. So when I, men when I mentioned these new nation states, I said that these new, new nation states were important is because it's the starter of decolonization and also this is uh, a like very modern and new idea and actually can be counted as one of the achievements for the Paris Peace Conference. That is the reason why when it comes to Paris Peace Conference, it's not only about the negative side. It also have at least one positive side about the new idea of self-determination or decolonization. But when it comes to these new nation states, you still also need to see that they're also a negative side of it. It's not only good because they can gain their independence. It's, it is not so good is also because since they have divided into small nation states that that's that really make them new of course and also small and also which will lead to weak right so when hitler came into power um, uh, when he adopted the expansionist policy actually for him, his first target is in Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe and all these Eastern European countries, which actually triggered the Second World War. So you have to also have to, when you give comments to these new nation states, need to see both sides of it. On one side, it's positive because we have so such a like new and modern idea about self determination, but also it is not so good because actually it encouraged Hitler for his aggr aggressions, right? So next part will be the exercise. Please finish this exercise and upload it on Teams. You just need to write down those answers. No need to copy the questions again, okay? So for Teams, you need to uh, upload two parts. You can just uh, write all the things on a paper or write all the things on a file. You, uh, I need two parts. First part is the notes for this topic. So you're going to keep notes on on a paper or your iPad. And then the second part is uh, the answers for this exercise. 